What up, America and everybody around the world? My name is Calligraphy, and this is After Hours with Calligraphy. Today, I got my first guest. We have Noah James. What's and the up? Wo- and the wonderful Lisa J. Hello. Thank you for having us. And this is the introduction. So this is actually going to be really cool. So right. we have a whole, I have a whole thing that we're going to start doing. We're going to change the world one All piece right. at a time. Work. Actually, if I'm getting real, real, we're about to fuck up the whole 2020 election right now. All I right. am going to be one of the people who tilts the hand of government. All right. Yeah. Sounds uh-huh. good. I'm glad. And we're going to start that by talking about culture, music, life, love, all the things in between. But first, I want everyone to know a little bit more about you. All right. So, Noah, tell me about yourself. How'd you get into music? Uh, I'm Noah James. I got into music um, as an escape. Shoot, writing, <laughs> battling, open mics, whatever I can get in into. I wanted to do blues, but couldn't sing. So rap was the next best thing that 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 was for me to express myself, either than football, and that's kind of violent. So I, music really uh, turned my aggression to passion. That's dope. Like, it, it for, for men, and I've been, shoot, I've been rapping as long as I, 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 could, I, I couldn't read until 14, so I've been rapping before that. Goddamn. Yeah, so people don't even know that, like, in the ninth grade, I really... Taught myself how to read. That's dope. Yeah, like really on some prideful shit. <laughs> like some. It's powerful. Yeah, like, man. Yeah. Hey, you get some qu- you get some teachers that hit you in your mouth with some gems. They hit you with some knowledge, and it makes you uh, it makes you stop playing the victim. It totally. makes you get to work. So yeah, man. But yeah, that's me rapping. Just escape since a kid. Psh, easy. I mean, you started off with, I've known you since it was Building Blocks. Sheesh. And then we did Project Blood IE. Man. I guess, I guess I'm going to cut in here for the record real quick. I've known Noah for damn near 12 years. 12 years, bro. I met you in 2007. Damn, yeah. Yeah, I met yeah, you in 2007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to see something really, really embarrassing about me, all you got to do is go on YouTube, right? And search... DJ Penn and Calligraphy versus No Can Do and Rhetoric. You can watch a 16-year-old me do it. get my ass do whooped it. in a battle. Man, I'm pretty good for 16 to go against No Can and Rhetoric. That's, That's pretty good, good man. Nah, it's good nah. footage. It's, it's great. It's, it's good memories. It's <laughs> hella good memories. <laughs> hella good. Black history. Black history. Black history. Black history. Exactly. Most Black definitely. History. Most definitely. Nah, man. Music, shoot. Even in the IE, shoot. From foundations, building blocks since... 10 years in IE at least. 10 years. Of doing, doing events, doing music. Probably five years figuring it out. Five years moving to different venues, getting kicked out of venues, moving the politics of the city where they think hip-hop is a nuisance, but really we're feeding the homeless. The youth got somewhere to go to building blocks. So we like, the last five years probably was like, psh, we found it. Like, we found our scene. We found the gold in our scene, man. Like, it's... Common ground. Yeah, common ground, DIY, everything. Like, psh. Hey, the community's beautiful. Nah, it's tight. It's like thriving. It really like, is. When everyone yeah. start... I don't know. It was... It was. I saw it, like, forget what year, but everyone just start moving. Everyone just start understanding, like, just move, just do. Totally. Stop looking around. Stop looking who, who's doing what. Just do you and do it. Don't even, don't wait for no one. Don't don't worry about opinions. Fuck it. Just. The authenticity plays yeah, better. Man. The authenticity plays so much better than trying to be like everybody else. You get, you don't, you're not, you don't have to chase it. It's like, it's, our, it's, it's there natural. for you. Yeah, it's yeah. there for you. Just working towards it. Totally. Yeah, it's, yeah. All right, now Lisa, tell me about your stuff. I ain't kind of hog the mic over here with Noah. Yeah. He'll, he's always hogging the mic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lisa J, Noah's partner right here in crime, all that stuff. How many uh, years y'all guys been dating? We've been to, it'll be 14 in September. Wow. So yeah. Lit. <laughs> Lit it's years. It's been a minute. Um, I run Brick to Your Face, you know what I mean? All the promotion, all that stuff. Organizing the events. How did Brick to Your Face get started? Um, it got started when Noah dropped his first project in Blanca Mode very first and we were trying to get it on blogs of course because back in the day with 2000 
was it nine or seven? Like eight. Eight yeah. or something. Like eight. Try to get on blogs. You know, they don't get you on. They don't accept it because they don't know you. So we're like, okay, we'll just start our own blog. Well, thank you for your submission. <laughs> just so you know, it's really hard running a blog these days. So yeah. for $20, yeah, we can put you on the front page. Than usual. Oh, man. Or you're just like, you know, you're not popping. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just start to break to your face. Start off as a, a blog. Just putting up people's work, you know what I mean? Because if you're, we felt like if you're looking for publication and you find us, then we we could put you up. Totally. And then moved into throwing events. Um, and then I also help manage Noah's career, help organize all that Boss. stuff. <laughs> Organ- Boss. Organize. I need a little bit more Rick Ross in that. James. Boss. <laughs> Boss. Lady. Keep it all together. Yeah. Than usual. Yeah. The late what ladies what ladies do what queens do the usual keep it organized yeah I feel it I feel yeah. it it's lit I I, it's hard like I never really know what I do he's always like you you do this and I'm like oh yeah I do that too and I do that <laughs> like <laughs> just modest, gotta, you just do stuff you know modest what I mean? flex try to make try to make this guy a superstar. Hey, one day at a time. Uh, one day at a time. I, I remember on tour like we. Uh, the tour manager had to bounce and she ended up running the whole tour with MERS and everyone. Really? Yeah, they put her in charge. Dude, I never even knew that. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, boss. Yeah, he didn't put me in charge. <laughs> oh, you're me. a responsible person. <laughs> I'm a responsible person. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> hey, man, the world's filled with pitfalls. Somebody's got to help, you know, Yeah, it's true. navigate through all yeah, that. I'm real, real bad with that type of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I like planning and organizing like I'm always like, hey, let's like figure, let's figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you want to do with your life? Let's figure it out. You know what I mean? I'm always bad with that type of stuff, actually. <laughs> Man, my whole thing is like, if I start it, I got to start it like right then and there. Like, yeah, yeah. We gonna do it? Let's do it tomorrow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm like, Are we gonna do that's this next you, week? That's you guys. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. not, like, that's, if I sit here and plan, yeah. man, it's death by paralysis. A man's no, yeah. ambition. <laughs> that's you guys, definitely. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm the one that just. Okay, we won't do it tomorrow. <laughs> we'll do it, you know, step by step. <laughs> cool. All right. Now that we got that out the way, we're going to get right into it. Uh-huh. So, Noah, I've known you since 12 years. Yeah. And how much did you weigh when I first met you? Probably That's my, rude. No, yeah. just like... <laughs> <laughs> no, Probably like six, just six something. Like yeah. six, like six plus. How much do you weigh now? Like 451. Losing weight every day. I know, man. <laughs> Flexing. Yeah, man. It feel good. I see you working out every day on your social media. Yeah, man. This putting is, in work. Yeah, this whole different life. How do you yeah, feel? It's crazy. I feel good. Like, I feel better. Like, really, like, I can walk more. Like, I, t- I told Lisa, I can f- I feel the difference mm-hmm. like, totally. when I'm walking, when I'm up, when I'm performing, when anything. Like, I just feel different. I don't... Hitting I'm, more triplets in the bars. Yeah, mm-hmm. man. Like, and just happy to get up. Even even though yeah. my body is sore. Like, it was a point to where I didn't want to get up because my body was sore. Now, because I'm working out, I'm I'm happy to get up. I'm happy that I can get up. I'm happy that I can go work out. That's dope. And see the result of, like, calf muscles and quad mm-hmm. muscles. And, definition. Yeah, you see in definition. <laughs> like, all right. Like, all right. Everything gets... Um, is is work the working out is working totally like, yeah hey like, I like that hell yeah so I want to ask you how do you feel about like the general health of hip hop right now and I mean I brought that up about like your your journey and like yeah. that going on but I mean like we got the Zans we got yeah. the Mollies yeah. we got too many young artists dying yeah. yep. dying I don't know man yeah it's it's it seemed like all the OG rappers are getting healthy. Yeah. Jada Kiss, South P, Busta, Dr. Dre, Timbaland, Big Boy, now even Killer Mike. Like all these, all the OGs are working out and becoming vegans and stuff. And then young kids is, is, they're so exposed to everything. Mm -hmm. Like everything is, it's different. I don't think we was exposed to like pills and yeah, and no. like this, no. not as weed or it's whatever. It's too easy it was, for them right yeah, now. Yeah, I think it's very um, accessible. Yeah, I think like the OGs where we got it, <laughs> we got we understand it because we understand for us to uh, do this forever as entrepreneurs, and we hear in every motivational speaker that health is wealth. 
health over like health as well. And that's really in if we technically like they say we love money. So if we love money, we have to love our health. Totally. In, in a sense, you right. So it's like I think our our priorities and our energy have changed when you hit that twenty eight to thirty six mark. You know what I mean? Like you start really thinking, but the young kids, man, they they feel like demigods, man. <laughs> they feel like nothing can hurt them. Yeah, yeah, they really feel like they're Dionysus, man. They really out here, like, really just living that life. And I don't know, like, it's, I feel like they're they going to have to go through that one, that one slip over where their life is almost taken. And but it's crazy, you know, people are dying and it's like people are, there's some people who did stop, you know, doing their vices and there's still people still doing it. But it's, I just feel like we've all gone through that phase of like, man, I know it all. Or like, you know, mm-hmm. you can't tell me, mm-hmm. but it's, but now it's on top of them having so much access to like everything, the every access, little thing. Yo, you know the what access I mean? is real. Yeah. I remember it was like 420, like two years ago. I'm like, man. Let's go smoke some weed and watch some Cheech and Chong. So I watched, I think it was Up in Smoke. And by the time like I watched like half of it, I was like, Chong's got problems. <laughs> I was like, man, you don't need to be doing Quaaludes, bro. Yeah. I was yeah. like, halfway through, I was like, I thought I was supposed to laugh more. And I was like, this is not as entertaining not as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, this is not as good as I thought it was. And yeah. I feel weird because I was like, man, maybe I'm just getting old. I feel like I'm getting old all the time. All yeah. talking no, to I folks. Feel you, yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I can't co-sign this. The thing this. is, we want to see people prosper and live. Mm-hmm. Totally. That's what it is because we're maturing. We understand how precious life is. Like Life is so precious. We know that it can be taken like that. Totally. You can swallow four or five, five of these pills and fall in a, and this, and fall in a uh, basket full of clothes and have a seizure and suffocate. And that's how one of my homies passed. That's crazy. Yeah, like he could have, but he fell in the in the in the clothes, and the clothes covered his face, and he suffocated while he had the seizure. Like gotcha. it's like that. Yeah. And I just saw him, and was like, boom! Four hours later, he's gone. So I like we understand that. We understand, that. and I think when the the young the younger generation when they understand that they be good. I think it's just that they're going to have to go through it. We see it all. That's why it's really a lot, but they're going to have to go through it, man. Yeah. And they're young, so, you know, we've experienced a lot. You get older, you experience a lot. Yeah. And it's like right now, they're experiencing a lot of crazy <laughs> stuff and, like, living on top of the world, everything, you know what I mean? Probably feeling like this is never going to end. And it's like, shh, it can end, like, in a second. Totally. You know I mean, like. We know. I'm mean, we know. <laughs> Look what happened to Mac. Yeah. And they yeah. found him in his prayer position. Whoa. That's crazy. Whoa. He can't even... That's, if that's not scary, kids, I yeah. don't... Man, I don't, I'm scared to sometimes buy chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I'm, scared, yeah. I'm scared sometimes to buy meat. I just eat and veggies. the romaine lettuce. Oh my god! <laughs> everything man. now, it's, just, it's crazy. The water, like everything, is so it's kind of like some people like that would kill you anyway. But I don't mean I'm gonna kill myself now. I'm yeah. just, at least you want to add on top <laughs> yeah. of like totally. Uh, <laughs> it's like compounding interest, like uh, for real. Health, man. Health and hip hop. That's weird right now, man. It's so like. I've always been taken back. I forgot what show I was watching, but it was it was with T.I. And T.I. was they were like, why do you guys rap about this stuff? And he was like, when, when our position in life changes, we'll rap about something different. Yeah. And I always wonder what... I feel like we have an interesting like dilemma with hip-hop, where hip-hop, if you listen to BuzzFeed and Huffington Post and everyone who's telling me that, you know, white folks are appropriating my culture every day, (laughs) that hip-hop is a reflection of the black community. And this is a criticism of mainstream music, because I feel like if I say, like, this is, like, what the records are telling us, someone's going to be like, well, you aren't looking hard enough. And I'm like, a lot of people, like, as, as a DJ, as, as a promoter, yeah, 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 yeah. As, as people in the music industry, we, we do search out, and these people are also coming to us. Like, yeah, we're, mm-hmm. we're finding them. But not everybody's watching nah. 
Breakfast Club. Not everyone's watching all these other venues and like other things to find it. Like they are fed what is given to them. Yeah, they're not looking for it. Yeah, they're not looking for it. So like what what we see is like this reflection of what I think they say is the black community that I think characterizes us. Oh man, for real. Like I think we was in Cleveland. Somewhere. We somewhere, in the somewhere in the middle. And me and this dude is talking about being pre-diabetic, white dude. And <clears throat> we're talking like we're brothers, man. And you know me, I'm I'm interested to see where they learn about our culture. Yeah. Say, man, where you get like learn about black culture? And he had this rap voice. He said, For real? You're not gonna get mad? I said, nah, why would I get mad? He said, BT. <laughs> <laughs> like, like plain and simple. I said, BET said, that's how I found MERS. MERS was on Uncut, and MERS was doing this. I was like, wow. Wow. That's how they found a lot everybody. Because BET one time was playing everybody, but yeah, Uncut had a different program. There was a lot going on. I remember Uncut. You used to get all the good music videos. And MERS had a video on Uncut, and that's how this dude found MERS, or BET Uncut. That's crazy. So it was like in the Midwest where... A lot of people in Cali don't know. Yeah. We're a lot. A, I, we toured a whole month in the Midwest not seeing people of color. We ain't talking about like Chicago, man. We're talking about like, we were like, if this man was like South Dakota, yeah. North Dakota, Idaho. Idaho. Like, <laughs> yeah. You, you only see white people and they learning about us from BT. Music and the culture that we share. That's it. That's yeah. it. We 12%. Like, we man. 12% of the population yeah. as, as, as black folks out here, man. Yeah. And hip hop is the number one consumed genre wow. of music so in you, our country. <laughs> and it's not consumed by us, it's created by us. I mean, yeah, it's created it by are. us. And, like, even if, I mean, if all 12% of black folks listen to it, that means that everybody <laughs> is in this. Is in the rap world. Yeah. Like yeah. everyone's respecting that. I'm yeah. like, nah, you got people who d- reject rap. No, yeah. yeah. I remember after I dropped my first album and I showed it to my brother, right? He was like, I was like, yo, show it to your friends. He's like, nah. And I was like, why not? He's like, say nigga in your rap lyrics, man. He's like, I'm not trying to defend it. He's like, as a black man, he's like, I can listen to it and I can consume it. But he's like, I don't proliferate this type of stuff. Whew. That was, I feel it. That was, mm-hmm. that was a deep one. truth. No, yeah. Yeah, but I have, I have family the same way. It's just, I don't know. I feel sometimes it's like, say with Sheck West right now, that song. And woo, Everybody said it. Like at games, their stadium. You can't beat up everyone in the stadium. Yeah. So it's like, what do we what do we do when it comes to that? To where the argument is slowly dying. Like that five that argument of is like we 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 turn we turned it into power. Yeah. Honestly, what I've always thought, like my crazy conspiracy theory about it is you know, everyone's mixing other races. You know, two generations down, no one's gonna notice the difference. No, nah, yeah. And then it's just the word. It's nah, just the word. I think I think so. like someone people get mad with what Mexicans say, right? Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, but they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, to me, to me, like if you're not that skin tone, you are. You can put sand in front of it. You can put brown in front of it. You can put yellow in front of it. You can put Asian in front of the N word because that's what be happens. That's what and that's what these kids do. These kids is really like that's a greeting. Yeah, that's a greeting, and that's a greeting of 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 power or my brother mm-hmm. or I want problems. It yeah. depends what tone is said in. So it's like I think the meaning of it has just like. It's just been so like we know what the word means, like and where it originates from and everything. But you know, people want to bring up certain examples to give it this excuse on why I use it this way and this and that. You know, so and, and the words of Uncle Ruckus, nigga just rolls off the tongue <laughs> like sweat rolls off a nigga's I try, back. I, I try my best not to say it because I know. I want people to say my. I don't want. I want people to say my lyrics, yeah. <laughs> and they get on stage, and what happened with Kendrick happens. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like, for me to be, when people say it in front of me, I stop them. If you say N E R in front of me, then you have a real problem. Facts. And I have a real problem. So if I'm a person to say like, "Yo, you can't say it in front of me," 
I had to switch up my music. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting better at that, where I'm not even really cussing. But I'm like, I have to, I have to practice what I preach. I feel I'm it. trying to, it's, it's hard, but if I want to live in that truth where I like, I don't want you to say it. I don't want no one offended. I don't want nobody. I want, because people are goofy when that, when it's that word. You don't, you think everyone's cool with it and someone come crack you with a bottle. <laughs> yeah. Head. You yeah. don't know. Like, I've seen that happen. So it's like, um, it's, it's weird with that right now, man. Cause you, you know, it's, yeah. I remember when, uh, when Kendrick didn't get album of the year and everyone was mad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember listening to it and I was like, I, f- I felt like it was because of the N word no. that, that held it back. And like, cause like swimming pools, swimming pools, it doesn't cuss in any of the verses. It only says, nigga, why you babysitting only t- two or three shots? Like it was one of those, the song didn't actually have to be explicit at all. Nah, like I feel it you. was no, yeah. clean song. I feel you. No, nah, I feel you. I, my first Rap belt on high school, Miss Wynn, my guiding counselor. I was cussing and saying nigga a lot. And she like, why? If you're such a lyrical, spiritual miracle, <laughs> you should be able to get better words uh-huh. and different words and better meaning. If you're a lyrical spirit, like just mocking us about us being wordsmith. She said wordsmith don't use the same word at the same time. She yeah. like how can <laughs> yeah man she she she, used, point. she yeah. used to get us man just about that and that stuck in my head too to where you know is like having some type of honor about you know what I'm saying what we're doing it's just yeah it's hard that's a nigga that's just a society <laughs> issue it is like, a society it's not issue it's straight it's not definitely not just hip hop like, oh no 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 it, yeah it, it's a big one it's yeah. a big one I mean. I look at it for also we we filling in a bunch of gaps here, people. So we kind of building this whole thing up. So I own a coffee company. You know, shout out the Reverse Orangutan. We serve coffee all over the world. Yep. Holla. Um, and I'm inside of a co-working station. I play the music for everybody inside this building. So whatever I play goes. Now. I can't be playing no gang banging cripping music at a coffee shop when I got people in the back who do meetings sitting here like yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, I can't yeah. play don't fight the pimp while this guy's trying to do his quarterly sales analysis. He's trying to, <laughs> he, he's trying to sell something, not nah. somebody. Nah. <laughs> like Nah, I feel you on that. Yeah. That's that's wild. Yeah. You got it's playlists now, nowadays is like I think that's the thing about hip- people like hip hop got to have different genres now, and as to be like, nah, man, then you not nah, nah, you have to now, you have to. I think a lot of music is just different genres, kind of now. See, I think in hip hop, everyone's like, you have to have that one song that's like your old school boom bap, I got bars song, and mm-hmm. then you got this one person who's like, I gotta be like eight oh eights and doing yeah. all this stuff. Yep. I mean, I think it's crazy that like. You have cats like like no name Gypsy and like like Sminos and like Sabas and yeah. like even like Vic Mensas who like really have like a lot of like pain and like beautiful words that they yeah, they spit yeah, out yeah, yeah. and none of it's breaking to the radio but all that stuff's on like Stephen Colbert's and stuff like yeah. that like certain people who are looking yeah. for it like yeah. it's curated for them and I was in, I'm always interested to see like how these genres expand or like how we get an expansion of hip hop like. Power 106, like 92.3, like that's like urban radio. Yeah. Like straight urban for the urban poverty, blue collar, like nine to five people. Like it's, it's, it's almost, it's like, I don't want to say the wrong word, but sometimes the music they get is like they just push poison all day. It's just consistent, just boom. boom yeah. 10 years. Ten times in a row, three times the same music over and over, and this me- music is medicine. If you keep on pushing the same thing, where someone is got negative energy on the song, are they going to get something? Are they fighting something? That's it's 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 never music that has light to it. It's never music that has light. Now you go to a kiss. Or you go to a, 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 like, pop a pop station where Lupe has broken that barrier where he did like alternative hip hop music. 
and he broke with like superstars and stuff like that. But you haven't made that type of music. No, to, but pop songs are more like light and like you know, yeah, just the topic I, matter is different. I think just how our the urban market is set up where they don't give too much consciousness a chance. Yeah, it's always something. I think they that, want to give it a. Uh, they don't want to risk. Of course, they want to risk on it. And Especially if you're conscious, radio. yeah. And if you're conscious, you're already blown up, like J Cole. Like you know, you get you get that you get that going. Or or you got Boogie now because he's co-signed by M. Yeah, and yeah. M is a powerhouse by himself. Yeah. So M gonna get you on the radio. Yeah. So it's kind of like. Cole's on the radio a little bit starting now. Though. Yeah. Yeah, he's you know catching I mean? up. Like, yeah. Now. I like that Boogie album. Yeah, but you know what I mean? It's, it's, I don't know. I always look at the urban market like that. Like, you always have to make some, like, make music like somebody like Malcolm Moore or Malcolm Moore and that Schoolboy Q song, White Walls. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, that's like pop hop. Yeah. In a sense. Like, or Sway Lee. Like, it's, I think you have to make, I think our, the, Hip hop sounds and genres really have to get broken down now, because you can't put little little yachties with sabas. You can't put. You can't do it. You can. You can't. You can't do it. It <laughs> Make no sense. I'm I'm with you on that, <laughs> man. All right. So the next thing I want to bring up because we kind of on a hip hop tangent, so yeah. I just want to talk more about this. Right. Um, we get people talking about what real DJs are and what real DJs aren't, and like the sounds that come through. And should we immortalize certain pieces of instruments, like the NPC, as like a part of hip hop? Yeah, like NPCs. What do you mean to immortalize it? Like, so like everyone's gonna innovate. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I I stand by the the belief that if there wasn't racism and poverty, like the DJ wouldn't have even came out. Like we yeah, yeah, we started cutting no, yeah. we started cutting four bar records and intros to music because yeah. like we couldn't have instruments ourselves. Like. DJs exactly. were like a, a response to poverty. Yeah. Like, we should see more roots. We should see actually more, more bands and stuff like that. That would be a hella dope yeah. movement. But like, I think that we should see like the NPC, like, because everyone's mad. Like, you're not, you're not a turntablist. Like, you're not scratching. You're mm-hmm. not beat juggling. I'm like, that's a completely different aspect of the music. Like, yeah. That no, is, yeah. That's not even. <laughs> honestly, like, DJs would have been perfectly fine playing just music. With a simple crossfader, no scratching at all. Mm-hmm. Just play a song to make people happy. Yeah. The popular DJs, I mean, you get, what's it called? Porn stars being DJs these days. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting here, they're not doing nothing but pressing two DJ, buttons. Yep. But as long as it's the jam and you dancing, everyone's and happy. That's, and that's the, that's the original DJ's job. Just to as set a vibe. Set a vibe. Selector. Set a vibe. Like this jockey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that was the original DJ's job until riots happened. I mean, you get people like Grandmaster Flash that start, like you said, cutting records. Like, I don't know, Immortalize. I think NPCs, like for sure. The vinyl, the, the original, like, turntables. Like some old school 1200s? Yeah, like straight up. Like, you know, I... You got to show people, like, where it comes from. Yeah, like, I the think, beginning. Yeah. Like, Maya put something up about... Maya, Maya put something up about should beat making be one of the elements, and we're like, yeah, but w- like that's DJ, like that's parallel. If if it's like, like, like if them cutting records, yeah, made a beat in. You know, like, like MCing is here, and then here come rapping, and here come everything else, like a sub, come, sub. Yeah, so if it's DJ, here come producing, here come like. Like whatever engineer, like even like engineers up here with with producing, like so it's kind of like everything became hand in hand if you mastered it all. Mm-hmm. Like if you mastered it all, you can DJ, you can engineer, and you can produce. Yeah. If you're a rapper, you can host a show, you can do it. You could you could MC a whole event, and you can perform. Like you should be able to do the both. You should be able to improvise. You should be able to host an event. And, you know, it's... I, I, I think with it becoming uh, something that, you know, you can make money off of, then it, all these other things come up with it. You know? But at the end of it, to do hip-hop is to rap, and then, like, the DJing, graffiti, and the breakdancing. 
You know what I mean? That's to, just to do hip hop. Totally. You know what I mean? Spray type can. of thing. That should be immortalized. Graffiti. Spray can should be immortalized. Oh, yeah. Some Graffiti acrylics. for yeah. sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, the, yeah, the paint. Dookie chain. Dookie chain. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the art Adidas, style, like the art style that them. came from it, yeah. like wild style and stuff yeah. like that. Most definitely, most definitely. Because like this is what makes like hip hop or that made the culture of hip hop. You know what I mean? One of the things that started like graffiti and then like the different styles and then like totally you know, those like, styles be evolving more now. More, like uh, that outfit, like Kango, <laughs> Duke Chain, and uh, and like the whole sweatsuit, like a whole little some shell toes. <laughs> yeah, like if you go through a history, like this was their combat. This was yeah, their. For real. You know, uniform. This, this is what they wore when they wanted to fight. They didn't go get guns. They could put on their Adidas and come, Fat laces. yeah, dance in front of you, in front of your girls, front of your girl. You can't dance. You don't got <laughs> like these Omarion. pelvic moves. <laughs> oh, you mad? Cause I'm styling yeah, on you. Don't you. Got these, exactly. you don't got these pelvic moves. <laughs> nah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, NPC. Damn, I would say a mic, but that's like corny. So everybody, yeah. everybody uses the mic though. Yeah, everybody yeah. uses a mic. We just yeah. do it better sometimes. We get to hold it like a like. You don't a need bit. a mic. Yeah, we don't sometimes. Yeah. Then, then you don't need a mic. You do mad acapellas. Hey man, street corners. <laughs> yeah, street corners. <laughs> the sound's not working. You know what? Just, I got just, just cut the beat off. I'm gonna just spit to him real quick. Hey, that's good about <laughs> us. Like that's the thing about that's our talent. Our talent is that that. Projectile, speech, debate, like everything got got to do with words in artistic manner, delivered or written. Like, Most, that's us. So we got to move on to our first break real quick, but we're gonna be right back. This show is produced by Productive Culture. Productive Culture offers full service audio production beats, mixing, mastering, and podcast production. To get your podcast off the ground, check out ProductiveCulture.com forward slash podcast and tell them the After Hours show sent you and get your first episode recorded for free. And we are back to After Hours with Calligraphy. I have my guests Noah James and Lisa J with me. And right now, we're going to get into it. We have a couple different segments that we're going to start rolling out as we start getting these episodes going. The first one that we have, Things I Learned the Hard Way. So we're going to write a book together because I don't want to write a book, but I want a collective book of everyone else. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. That's a good book. So if you want to join in, you can always tag me. By the way, my Twitter is D-R-T-Y-C-R-S-V, Dirty Cursive. Mm, I like that. So you can always hit me up on that. Hashtag Things I Learned the Hard Way. Noah, what's one thing you've learned the hard way? Uh, exercise or you die. <laughs> okay. I fell in two diabetic comas. That was the hard way. I learned exercise, eat right, drink water, um, love yourself or die soon. <laughs> Fast. <laughs> Real bad too. Like bad. Everyone is, those things, it really, it broke it almost broke my spirit even talking about it. That almost, like, my spirit is strong. I know my spirit is strong, but that almost broke my fucking spirit. And that's how strong that was. Like, man, if you on a journey to do anything, first look at your health. Because it's going to get real. And you can't be out here flying planes back and forth because your blood is getting thin. And soon you hit the ground in the terminal, your blood going to go back regular and you're going to have a motherfucking stroke. And that's how Heavy D died. That's what I learned the hard way. Like, do what you're supposed to do. That's crazy. Like, just simple. So simple. So simple. simple. Yeah. Like, I said, ooh, universe. You said, ooh, mother. Fucking soul. Everything's simple. Said, we, we make it complicated. We make it. We make it, we yeah. make it complicated because we want to play the victim, even though we are a victim. But is the verdict is done? It's out. The sentence is out. You are already doing the sentence. So what you can do is re- rehabilitate yourself, and that's what I learned. Boom, Lisa. Oh. What have you learned the hard way? <laughs> Thing. Um, I know, put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've learned that the hard way, <laughs> be careful what you ask for. 
because you could you you think you know what you want, but a lot of things come with it that you don't want, don't expect, and you don't you don't even think about. You know what I mean? So I feel like I've learned to like if I want this, I have to take everything that comes with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um like I said, even if I'm not even like expecting that outcome to happen, like, well, this is what this is a part of it all. You know what I mean? Even if you don't understand it, like this is just a part of it all. You know? Facts. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm always like, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> be careful what you like with everything. Like just be careful what you ask for, because a lot of things are gonna come that you don't even expect. You don't even think about you. Shoot, you're just like, what the heck? <laughs> like, the unintended circumstances are like yes, consequences, always. consequences. Yes. Always. For real. So we out here, we got people driving on their engines, you know, revving motorcycles. We live, <laughs> we live. <laughs> so here's your note of the day. And this goes for everybody who's drinking coffee these days. You know, if you come through my cafe and you ask me a weird question, here's a note. Drinks really come in like two sizes, man. I make you a latte, I make you a cappuccino, I make you an espresso like a macchiato. All these other cafes, coffee shops, they just be in bougie. Bougie as fuck, actually. If you get in a cappuccino, it's equal parts espresso, milk, and foam. It's supposed to be like a five ounce beverage. <laughs> Macchiato, three ounces. A latte is like 12, unless you go into Starbucks and you're getting your Bill Gulp. You know, I need my 42 ounce mocha latte with extra cream, <laughs> no sweetener, decaf. <laughs> They're messing you up. And then you go to all these cafes and they make you feel like you're an idiot. You guys got a flat white? No, we do cortados. No, we do this. It's real easy. Here's a note from me to you. You want a three ounce, a five ounce, or a 12 ounce. Aside from that, they fucking with you and they're trying to take your money. That's a note. That's a good note. That's Thank a good you. Note. Yeah. I ain't know. I'm going to be better food consumers one day at a time. And it's going to be all from a nigga of all trades. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always wondered why they don't just serve stuff in the servings that we're sub- like one serving. Two serving, like, but you know, Oh, but, because the food industry is trying yeah. to make sure that people just no, consume yeah. more. I mean, yeah. consumerism is like a big problem. No, and, yeah. You know, I was watching like Trigger Warning with Killer Mike and I watch a lot of this stuff. I love like the, yeah, yeah. the mm-hmm. politics of like how yeah. it is, man. And I think that a lot of the stuff that like the black community needs right now is a lot of this integration. That's why like coffee shop has been one of my biggest dreams because it's a specialty food and it has layers to it. Like yeah. we work, like my company works directly with farmers. Like yeah. we work with importers and we work with farmers. We, we pay these farmers better wages than like what some of these big companies are doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and we're going to get to black Twitter because this is leading into my, my rant about how much I dislike black Twitter. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Black Twitter's going to hate me by the end of hey, this Hey, man. I, ooh. Hey. I'm part of music right? Twitter, so I don't know where I'll be at. <laughs> like, Twitter. Black Twitter be kind of... Black Twitter's wild. Hey, man. But we're going we to move on to that. We're going to move on to that. But, you know, a lot of what the black community needs right now is, like, you see these coffee shops that come through and, like, they do generally good for like their communities and like they try to pay well like from the farmers all the way up you know if we want to see black equality and greater black equity in our community we can't be supporting iphones that pick up (coughs) slave labor like and it stinks because like we're in a catch-22 like as consumers and and the history of black people like we've been forced to be consumers we were free from slavery and then we were forced to purchase Mm -hmm. we never got 40 acres we were never able to produce for ourselves Mm -hmm. and all we can do now is course correction. I mean, we can fight for the 40 acres. We should fight for the 40 yeah, acres. Yeah, we should fight for it. But I mean, in the meantime, it's course correction. It's yeah. how, do we, how do we navigate through this system already? Yeah. And it's about finding companies that, that treat people from the bottom up better. It's about buying like local, like local no, no, food, for local real. produce. Yeah, like, it's really about building the community from, from the core. Yeah, mm-hmm. from the core. No matter who it is. No matter who it is. It's, it's, it's about it's what a, you're yeah. doing and what you're doing for the people around you yeah. because... I had a debate with somebody and it was on Facebook. It's trying not to fuck with Facebook <laughs> no more. And they were like, we need a black owned bank. And I'm like, we need to change banking regulations. And they're like, you sound like the white man. And I'm like, no. no. Tell me how a black bank is going to survive against Wells Fargo and Bank of America if it's not going to do $32 overdraft charges like everyone else. Yeah. Oh, they're going to just not do it? Yeah. They're not going to expand. Like, they're not going to survive. They're not going to yeah. survive. The rules are fucked up. Yeah. The rules yeah, are fucked up. We have to yeah. fix the rules. And... All these people are like, oh, you still fuck with white people, huh? Like black Twitter be on it. Like, oh, you still fuck with yeah, white people. Yeah, because they don't they don't see the core. They just yeah. see what they want to see on the surface. The core is like the core, the the 
Structural inequality was caused by white people, but also white people are part of the solution. Yeah. And, and by knocking them down 24-7 and not trying to be like no apologist. Like it, mm-hmm. It's about like looking at it square in the face and understanding where systemic problems lie and how we fix it. Like that is, yeah. that, that is a big part of it. And you know, like the way that we eat, the music that we consume, yeah. the, the neighbors that we have, the culture that we are building yeah. up is like a yeah. big problem. And like, I don't want to bring negativity into the show. I don't want to bring things that like aren't worth discussing. You know, like I'm not going to sit here and make this, uh, this show like a criticism about like every rapper that I don't mm-hmm. like or something like yeah. that. It's about finding like, what can we do better? Like, why are these things happening? Yeah. And like, like I said earlier, like T.I. said it best, like when are we going to stop rapping about these things when our circumstances change? And we need to find ways that we can bring back to these people. Like, one of, my, one of my goals that I can get is that I can get Nipsey on this show. Wow, yeah. And I want to talk to Nipsey, and I want to find ways of sponsoring young black entrepreneurs with coffee and, like, showing them, like, yo, we can do this. Like, piece by piece, we can start building up a community. Yeah. It also helps my business. But I mean, it's, <laughs> it's crazy how in Atlanta they have that community. But it's also Chocolate City in Atlanta. Yeah. So, I mean, when you have a black majority or, like, yeah. a, no, a larger yeah, black demographic, like, it helps out. Yeah. It just... to, to find that community community in California, you know what I mean? Like, to to have people inspired and take risks on other black men or black women to build other businesses. Totally. I've seen that in Jacksonville. My family do it in Jacksonville. Shoot, my family would do it in Jackson, Mississippi. So it's like how Lemert is. Like, Lemert is kind of, uh, is it, built like that, but it's only like Lemert yeah. in Cali. Yeah. It's only Lemert. In Southern Cali. Yeah, Southern Cali. In Southern yeah. Cali, Oakland. yeah. She, Oakland is dope. Oakland's super yeah. dope. Oakland's yeah. wonderful. Like, yeah. The Bay you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the Bay. Like you said, it's all about the community. Is is If it's not... And it has to be everybody. Everybody. Yeah. It has to be everybody. This it is, just comes down to this the people. Is like, this, is, this is America. America is the... I call it the beautiful abomination. It is. The great melting pot. Yeah, because it's like... We all shouldn't and should... Whatever, whatever. We all shouldn't be here. We all yeah. shouldn't be here at all. We all shouldn't be here. Like, it's only supposed to be one people here. Mm-hmm. But we all here. Yeah. yeah. So now we all here. This isn't a one race country. Yeah. It's not. No. It can't be. Mm-hmm. It can't be. It can't survive like that. Then, then we like you know the old how China was back in the day. Yeah. All these dynasties. things will be separated. All that stuff. Yeah, right? like there's no way we're gonna survive. It's all gonna be a civil war. Yeah. Like, nobody's ways. supposed to be here, so let's all enjoy it. Let's all enjoy it. So we have yeah. to break down, like say, like systematic shit first. We gotta break yeah. down all that shit first. We gotta go look at the old constitutions and shit. Like at the end of the day, we know who was running it in the beginning. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And and the laws were set in the beginning. So it's it makes sense that they're gonna cater to a group of people. And you know what I mean? And yeah. we know who the group of people are. It feel like- so that so like you said, you got we have to change the rules. Not yeah. oh, we just need to start our own. Cause we can't always start our own. We, can't, we gotta no. change the rules so that we could maybe even start our own or even have a chance. Like, like no one, like no one's superior. No yeah. one. No one's superior. Hell no, nah, bro. Yeah. Like this was all work. And these forever. rules need to be changed so that nobody could be superior through the laws. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's being superior through the laws. Like, cause like he said, nobody's superior. We don't care, about, emotions. We don't care like, about the emotions. Or we whatever. just need these laws need to the make laws everybody make, yeah. truly equal. Accountable. And yeah. Accountable. Accountable, Accountable. Accountable is really the like, main everyone thing. Everyone gotta be yeah. accountable for for everything. Cause it seems like everyone is wild right now. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> it's it's wild, it's wild it's Look at look at the, the head of the country. Oh, he's wild. Oh, he's wild man. <laughs> so we all wilding. Like we're all like, <laughs> fuck it, we just gonna keep doing what we doing yeah. and hustle or like, you know, and then other people are like they're gonna do what they do and like shoot the government closing and it, I remember when like, oh, you gotta get a government job. Like, you know, you said you good, get a government job, and then look what happened. Like you gonna work a month for free. Whoa. A month for free. Oh, yeah. People wow. like lost shit in a month. The crazy thing and, and the stuff that we don't even talk about, like a lot of those people who are like people who work at, like the DMV or like things like that or whatever, like they get their back pay. Like Congress always signs yeah. and gives them like their back pay. But like let's say, let's say like you you do work on like the streets or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like the government gets money and then they hire like a third party contract. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. All those yeah. people, they don't they're screwed out of all their cash. Yeah. yeah. And if they go and they find someone else to do it, it's like we were here. We're supposed to work this day. Like we pay you when you do the work. Yeah. So you don't get it back. Like, 
everything just gets pushed back six months, and you just lost however much pay. A lot of money. A lot of money, people. Yeah, a lot of a lot people's well-being. Nah, nah, like, it's, it's wild. wild. Women and children not getting medicine that they need for their families because the government shut down. And it's crazy. And people, this whole re- Republican and Democrat, I said, like, nah, bro, it's not even about that. Like, I understand. Oh. I, I tell people, I understand both sides. Because when I get in tax bracket, I might feel a little red. <laughs> <laughs> like, like people, people act like Cardi B talking about government takes half her money. Yeah, if someone and she started reading about Republicans <laughs> now, cause she's or she getting the forty five million dollars, she getting big checks. Yeah, and government is taking forty five percent before you even touch it, Cardi. Yeah. yeah, like we this is this is the game. America is a business. It's a straight up business. So I understand with both sides. Like one side, like I want to keep some of my money. The other side, like all right, so people need help. But I'm like all right, let's. All that money is not accountable know, for, man. man. Yeah. All that money is not accountable for, <laughs> man. We could, if we re like restructured how we did like just the military budget. We could pay like for so many schools for so many kids. Like we could do healthcare. Yeah, like like people don't so want to do the work. Oh, yeah. that, I like, mean, that's yeah. a, people don't want to do the, the back end work. work of like, like okay, we need to erase everything and like start over, or like they just like, don't want to do the work. I know, I know, politics is. Like, if you want to be a businessman, get in politics. Oh, Like, for facts. sure. If you want to be the ultimate business, like, if you want to be the John Cena of business, get in politics. Business is politics. Yeah, that's what it is, yeah. right? So it's like, that's the only route. Everything else is like, it's a mirage. Like, yeah. this is the big thing. This is the biggest. So it's like, <laughs> to me, like, I like, where do we even start, like? Do politics even do we even need them? No. Do we need them? A little bit. A little bit. A little like, bit. I mean, how the, much how much do we need politicians? Like we don't need the politicians that we have. Like we don't need <laughs> <laughs> we But don't the, need. the structure or the concept is good. Yeah. We just gotta do something with it. <laughs> yeah, I mean representative government's fucked up when you know. Half these people are taking dark money from who knows where. Yeah. Like they're not accountable to us. Like yeah. they're accountable no, to the yeah. corporate donors. Yeah, exactly. Like, Whoever give the money to them, whoever sponsor they has. Really, and I say this because the thing I was kind of leading into is: Do you think, for one, do you think that black people would openly say like we need an agriculture movement, like where we need to say like black people need to get into fields and farm? Like I think that if you told a, a group of a group of random black folks like. You know the way that we end a certain part of like systemic inequality? We all got to get into the fields and start like tilling land. How many of you think would be like, fuck out of here? 80%. <laughs> for sure. For sure, 80% will be emotional first. <laughs> Every day they talk about like, you know, with all like this stuff, all this bullshit with the wall, immigrants do work that Americans don't want to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like... Most of them are farmers. Yeah. You don't want to farm. Yeah. You don't want to make food to yeah. eat. You want to starve. It's starve or slave labor. Yeah. That's that's how they view it. And that stigma, that stigma of agriculture and like us not wanting to like care for our food is one of the things that kills us every day. That's one of the that's one of the nah, hitches. That's nah, one of the that's big. Real, bro. We don't care until we, appreciate. we have to have an agricultural movement in our society where people like don't think that being like a farmer is like a bad job. Yeah, yeah. and. Every day, I mean, Democrats do this shit all the time. Oh, they do the work that people don't want to do. Like, you don't want to feed your family? I will do what I got to do to feed my nah, family. To yeah. break, to, it to is, break bread. It is, but in breaking that society, uh, I mean, Lisa was talking about stigma and per- perspective. Like, you got to really look at shit how it is where a janitor mer- makes a lot of money. A janitor, a janitor works at a hospital makes a, a nice amount of change. Yeah. He can live nice. In Rancho Cucamonga in the North End. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like that stigma of, of cleaning or mm-hmm. growing. Blue collar jobs. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Like, Labor but, jobs. We shame the blue collar, man. Nah, mm-hmm. nah, I know. But it's like us, it's like <laughs> we seeing a homie working at McDonald's and everyone want to uh, make him feel bad or call him a lame for it. And it's like, shoot, he can pay nice. My homie Jacob was getting nice checks mm-hmm. at McDonald's. So it was like, working. Work nah. is work. And that's what, I, that's what I've been, that's how I've been raised. Like, work is work. Yeah. No matter what it is. Don't be afraid of work, no matter what, what work it is. I lived in trailers and worked a trailer guard. But Lisa would visit me in these trailers. And I lived in these trailers. And I worked a job for like two years. 
And it was like, I'm changing septic tanks. I'm doing all of that shit because work is work. I don't care. Yeah. And it was probably the most money I ever made legally, legally in my life. And you know what's crazy? You know, some of those jobs take a lot of science, man. Like, doing, yeah. like, septic systems and all right. that. It takes a lot of work. Like yeah. A lot of class. I, I had a lot of class, a lot of labor class, a lot of... Um, um, like, I didn't even... At this time, I think I didn't even... I didn't graduate from high school. I, I went back and got my GED and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Because I wasn't even into that. But I realized, like, damn. I'm going to have to go get this GED. Because... They want me to go do all these CPR classes and I'm working for Sam Manuel and they want me to do all of these uh, uh, trades. I had to get mm. all these trades to work at Sam Manuel for one job. And I'm like, damn, this is... <laughs> <laughs> but you learned a lot. Nah, like, yeah. man. And I'm proud. I'm very proud of that. Like, I think we we as, as even African-American black people, we should have trades. Yeah. We should know how to like do Like Killer Mike or something. Yeah, man. Killer Mike did it, man. Like, we should have a lot of traits. We should know how to do a, a, a lot of things in our house, or ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. We like, use everybody in general. We're yeah. so used to like, oh, you you could... We're so easy access to stuff, you know what I mean? Or you don't even just think about like stuff breaking and you you could just call anybody, you know? Instead of like, hey, why don't you fix it yourself? Man, I, I, I think about what my grandmother taught me and it's like... I don't think like, oh, it was bad. My grandma like, when you move in a new neighborhood, you got to find this appliance. You got to find everyone that fixed something. Yeah. You have to find a person to fix something. I understand that, but what happened when we learn how to do it ourselves and certain things, you know what I mean? Then reach out to certain people in the community, community to do certain things. And I just remember my grandma will just rely on that. We wasn't too self-sufficient. On anything, if anything messed up in the house, like for real, <laughs> like it would be bad. <laughs> I remember learning how to fix my car. I learned. I remember learning how to do like my basic plumbing. My pops used to be like, "This is a snake pipe. Like this is what you got to do to clean. Just yeah. get all that type of stuff done. Like and having the tools and the means for us to do that. Mm-hmm. I've, I've gone to some of my homies' places where they have like full backyards and like it's just a dirt patch. I got a small ass backyard. I got mm-hmm. a little little vegetable garden. Hey, try to man, try to for, try to feed myself a little for, bit. For real. One or two things. One or two things. Nah, little yeah. pieces. Nah, not for real. Nah, yeah. nah you Renaissance man, man. <laughs> for we real. Try, we try. Mm-hmm. We try. Yeah, man. But that's the goal. Like, you know, when you start waking up, you start realizing certain things. What's it's, important? Yeah, like. You know, where I thought music was, like, really important, but music is natural to me. Like, creating that's now the life, the better life, to help create a better life after when I'm gone. Like, even that's more important now, too. Like, you know, my kids, homies' kids, all of that. Like, now it's like... Music is just one part of who we are. Yeah, now, yeah, music is just a part of it. That's, like, endless. That's infinite. Yeah. Everything else is going to happen. And I don't want everything happen just around me and go while I'm just in this. So now it's like, I don't know. When you hit that 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 age, you just start thinking about every yeah, man. I feel it. I feel different it. Different things are important, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. Noah James, Lisa J. Thank I you. I appreciate you guys. We got one more thing that we're gonna do. Just so everyone remembers that I can actually spit and stuff. Every time we do episodes, you guys are getting sixteens. Oh, dang. I didn't write... I didn't bring my 16. Oh, man. Well, this is just for me. This is, oh. This is just for me. Oh, my so, bad. My so bad. Also, oh, okay. I, need, I, need, I need footage for the gram. I need footage for the gram. So, we'd be like, That's oh, yeah. Right. You still spit. <laughs> mm-hmm. There you go. Content. Yeah. Video content. Video I content. Like I want to say thank you to Productive Culture. All Woo-hoo. my friends helping us out. I want to thank everybody who's going to watch this. Please make sure that you thank like you. and subscribe. Do all the social media stuff. Hashtag... Things I learned the hard way. We're going to keep it going. We're going to keep it going. And without further ado, here's to the start of the campaign. Glasses up. I only talk to my fellow generals and in their last name. Total respect is given inside the field of battle. Look inside their eyes before you burn their village down and call their cattle. See, this is all for power. See, every lyrics calculated. Why so I could go and simply raise your towers? Raise, raise to make do glaze into rain clouds and start raining showers. Mona Lisa with the painting powers. Wads word with the beastie boys. Twin landings on a Newark fountain. Red and blue coats on the eastern boy. Kick the tea out. Let's get the party started. Revolution, homie. Man, it's wholehearted. It's a step solution. Had to 
the soul started and it's best produced before I'm cold hearted. Misfortune if you EQ and you mix out my lyrics hidden. My G U to that Draco's man, they get the F out. So why your lames are missing. Double kill boy and I'm about to penta. Like I lost my mind, like I had dementia. And I came through flying in the black dimension so I can plot this crime with the rap rebellion. Hip hop, I do this for you. I know that it's crazy, but you my baby. Since the day that you saved me, I hope you ain't lazy, cause today I need you to bounce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us for our first episode of After Hours with Calligraphy.